Hi, this is Michael Munshaw, sketch card artist on Marvel Premiere and Marvel Masterpieces. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And as the song goes, while the merry bells keep ringing, may every two and a half by three and a half inch dream come true. Happy holidays, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) The funny thing about the Rittenhouse stuff is that you often have stuff on sales sheets that never makes it into the set. Yes, that's really cool. Uh, Chronicles of Riddick is a prime example. There were going to be costume cards in that set. Right. Turns out there was just um, one in the end. It was a Vin Diesel shirt. Wow. Um, but they had a whole list of them, and it never oh made it gosh. out. And they it's never crazy. made it out. Yeah. Well, I and like... I think <clears> – That's <throat> so cool, man. That's not unusual written house um, sell sheets. No reflection on them at all. It's just changing things, you know, yeah. from production I mean... to release. I've seen that with like sketch cards, like on, um, I think it was Flare Skybox, maybe not, not Rinhouse, but Rinhouse, I know for a fact Rinhouse had on their sell sheets pictures of sketch cards that were actually in the product, which is yes. the coolest thing that the sketch cards were being used mm-hmm. for promotional material. Yeah. Like, Upper Deck kind of does that, but the fact that it was printed and it went to shops and all that stuff is kind of cool. Mm. It's quite a thing to. Uh, are you one of those collectors that's got one of the sketches that's on the sell sheet or on the box? Because I know there's a few. That's quite a thing for quite a few collectors. Yeah. So I was really lucky. Um, Matt Fuller helped me obtain because um, he had it. I don't. He didn't know, and I didn't know at first either. Actually, until after I bought it from him. Um, but yeah, Fantastic Four archives. He had a Silver uh, Surfer by Warren Martinek, our yes. buddy Martinek, and I seen it on Blowout. He has shown it. I always liked it, but I was like, it's weird. You know, when I reach out to friends to buy stuff, I always try to like overextend the number because I'm just not I'm like I'm at or anybody really like if I'm seeking somebody out for a card, I don't try to like haggle. I try to go like 50, 100 bucks over because mm-hmm. I have to like really want it. And then they have to really go through the process of being like, you know what I mean? Do I actually yeah, want yeah, to yeah. sell? And, and it bothers yeah, them too. So I try, I try to be really careful with that. Yeah. But yeah, I hit up Matt. I was like, you tell me a price. I, and it's done. And he gave me like 250, 200, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little oh, less. Cool. I don't remember. And it was super nice. This was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't, nothing, just sent the money, even sent money for shipping. It was done, done deal. And then I was going through my sketch card collection, trying to figure out what surfers fit where, how I'm going to control the sketch card collection, because there was no way I was going to like just grab sketch cards. You know what I mean? That was not going to happen. So I had to, I had to be really selective. And then I was looking at the Fantastic Four stuff and I was like, well, let me get the checklist and the sell sheet. So I have this part of the the collection because surfers featured on there. And then I looked closely and I realized I was like, oh, shit. okay." Mm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? And then I looked back at the card and yeah, it was pretty cool. And then I (laughs) it's even on the box, too, which is really sick. Yeah, it's really. Oh, I love that. I told Matt. And then Matt went through his whole collection <laughs> to find if he had any on the boxes and social sheets. And he did. He had a couple of them too. So. I was going to say, that would have taken him quite a while because yeah. he's not got yeah. a small collection. That's no, right. No, 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 no. I mean, that's I think, a big you know, sketch collection. He um, took his time. Like a lot of us, a, a lot of people I mentioned it to are just like, let me go back and look. And a lot yeah. of people like started looking. It was pretty cool. It's like me occasionally. I'll go through my Marvel masterpieces, twenty sixteen, twenty eighteen, and twenty twenty binders, and just to triple check, I haven't got any alphas and omegas that I haven't seen before. And I do it like almost once a year. Nothing's going to have changed since the last time I what did it. What have I not noticed here? What have I not <laughs> noticed? Well, no, but the thing is, is because other other number collectors are popping up, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. It, uh, you couldn't predict it. Like, someone who's collecting card number eight there's someone who started collecting card number two 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 oh. which is smart because it means that you're never going to be anything that's less than 200 made oh, that is clever yeah i like that that's actually a good idea see that i admit, I, am, I i'm happy like i feel like we're at a stage now in the hobby where like <laughs> we've come to a point where a lot of people who were in here that were just trying to like whatever 
now I feel like there are people who are like, it's starting to come down in price a little bit, a little bit, you know, so things are still selling, but like it coming down a little bit in price and people are now like getting inventive, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Getting creative with how mm-hmm. they're collecting. I don't know. For mm-hmm. me, that's like the hobby. You know what I mean? Like we'll oh, see yeah. how different people collect. That's the way it's evolving. It. It's evolving, isn't it? So yeah, I, I love that. I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce this. I'm gonna get us going, even though we've got pre roll here. B roll, pre roll, whatever. Um, <laughs> let's let's start us off, and then because <laughs> because I I want to get into it because this is brilliant. Um, you've got your hobby head on today, my friend. I love it. <laughs> I keep I got this image of you like different Lego heads and just <laughs> this is your hobby head. <laughs> you can turn it around, he's got got a grumpy face, he's got a smiley face. Um anyway. Hello everybody, my name is Ian Taylor and you are listening to the Mindful Card Collectors Podcast. Oh, this is going so well already. Your weekly digest of hobby goodness. <clears throat> Oh, with me, as always, is my co-pilot in all things Marvel cars. So for his Christmas gifting, I Google Christmas Surfer. <laughs> You're Ooh. cracking up, aren't you? I love Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That's great. Oh, Ooh. I wrote um, this. How ingenious. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to start that again. For his Christmas gifting, I Google Christmas Surfer and come up with 10 surf-inspired Christmas songs about holly trees and hanging five. That is actually the name of the article. I really? That's yeah. actually pretty crazy. It featured Stuck in the Chimney by the Surf Boys, Aloha Christmas by the Dukes of Surf, Little Drummer Boy by the Surf Elves, One of Them Promised Psychedelia, The Mermen, Silent Night. Uh, one was a charity record with real doctors playing guitars, um, and that was Surf Christmas by the Attendings. Uh, and number one was the Hollyberries go surfing with Santa. All of this is not quite as cosmic or metallic as expected, but Merry Christmas anyway to my good buddy. Aww, Rad. <laughs> Merry Christmas, man. That's so nice. <laughs> I was going to try and find some audio clips of them, but you know what? I haven't. So um, I'll put no. some in the links. But, That's but yeah, so great. but there's a whole article about surfing huh. song like people like, like people dressed as Santa Claus surfing, which isn't what I wanted. I wanted more yeah. silver stuff but find it could i i could not i've no it's idea why google i went all with that mm, google well no to be fair it's it gives you what it believes the most relevant results <laughs> i guess it can't know what my headspace is by just typing in the words christmas surfer. so um this episode will already have some roaring fire music on the audio version behind us as we normally do when we sit around the fire to record an end of year special um and it may or may not have had uh, a Christmassy intro. Uh, chances are it will be by our good buddy Michael Munshaw because we've got an, we've got a few in the bag from him, and I don't think we'll have time to ask him for a new one, so we'll use his one from last year. Um, I love it, um, which is great. And there might be other Christmassy things tacked in or at the end. So whilst you can probably see us on YouTube and you're watching us on YouTube right now, the audio version tends to be the little bit more polished experience. Just saying. Mm-hmm. So why don't mm-hmm. you experience both? Listen to us, Ooh. and then go and see us on YouTube. Yes, do both, not just one or the other. Hang on, I'm gonna have a slurp. That's fine. Sorry for that, people. Anyway, <laughs> how long have you been awake for this morning? Ooh, five hours. Really? Uh, yeah. Seriously? Uh, You're up at 4 a.m.? Good stuff. I was today. What? I was today. <laughs> I was going to say, you're you're unusually sprightful oh. at this time of the morning. Yeah. yeah so, because yeah. uh, last week you just rolled out of bed, didn't you? Oh, majorly just rolled out of bed. Like, the <laughs> sadly rolled. Like, if the computer was next to me in the mattress, you would have seen me done the lift. And then, oh, and like, me. yeah, I would have been ready. Uh had my head erect my yeah it's bad yeah yeah, yeah. 4 a.m wow 4 a.m. okay okay Killer. Ah, what whatever floats you um no, it's not on purpose so this so this episode will be our last one of the year but there should have been one last week as people listen to it i'm going to hold mm. that till january now because i'm just not going to have time to turn it around <laughs> sorry no, so no, no. if right. you're ex- if you're expecting uh webby um, almost we'll Webby. We almost arrived. He did arrive, and we have recorded that. But it will awesome. be it'll be in January now because I've simply had. Uh, kick us off for the new week. year. 
Yeah. He will kick us off for the new year. Um, yeah. It's a, it was a full-on week. I, I was on a training course all week, um, so I now am certified to Peace. audit to ISO 27001 standards. If any of our listeners know that, answers on a postcard. I'm certified in it, and I don't know what it means. Anyway, I do, actually. Sorry. I shouldn't say no, that. No, you really. do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you definitely know what it means. I definitely know what it means. very cool. It is very cool. So, as it is our last episode of the year, I wanted to do... Well, we usually do kind of a mini... Uh, we don't really issue statuettes, but we, we do kind of have these little categories and things like that. But because it's been a bit of a slim year for new product mm -hmm. I thought let's do some slightly more off the way so I've jotted some stuff down some of which I sent you yesterday so yes let's start with the most obvious one which will possibly be the briefest one which is set of the best set of the year because um, we haven't really got that many contenders really no we don't actually no. Um, so we've got Spider-Man Metal Universe We've got Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, to be fair, I'm being a little bit unfair with that because there have been some EPAC exclusives. So there's been the Black Widow set. There has mm. been the four Love and Thunder Weekly. There's also been a Wakanda Forever Weekly. Um, and there has been, there was something else as well. For the life of me, I can't think. Anyway, but there's been Unbound as well. Now, I know that started in last year, but it went through and finished kind of around... Yeah, no. It did, actually. Spring? Late spring? spring? Did it finish? Late Somewhere spring. about April, think, May? Something so like that. that yeah. um, <laughs> so, and then, of course, you've got the physical releases. You've got Spider-Man, Metal Universe, and Spidey Into the Verse, as we said. And that's it, unless I'm missing something. Oh, God, is it really it? I think that's it, yeah. Um, so I can't really speak to the EPAC Weekly ones because I think the the whole gig with the Ragnarok and the... Um, not Ragnarok, Love and Thunder and Wakanda Forever was it was their way of getting product out while it was still close to the film release. Yeah. But they are kind of... They're not... They're, they're images of the characters, but they're not really images from the film, if you see what I mean. Oh, sorry, someone just phoned in. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's damn. too harsh. That's that too harsh. harsh. Um, That's too harsh. No, no. no they, oh, I, I appreciate them. No, no. I mean, they put out a product that, like, during the movie, interesting Ooh. photos, especially like it was like it was like concept art character type of stuff. Yeah, right? but kind of photorealistic. I mean, kind of photorealistic. It, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. very cool. I thought um, it was good. I don't think they've printed them yet. Though. I think they're digital up until a certain point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's so, like, the you thing. Get them, yeah. So that's, that's, that's the how thing. they're getting around the printing delay. I get it. It's a good promise. And I understand it, um, mm. especially people who just want to open packs. And like, if you're a fan of those movies, which I am as well, it's it's a cool thing to kind of partially yeah. collect. Those sets weren't big either, were they? Not massively, I don't think. No, I think they I were. I don't think so. They weren't traditional sets. They weren't, and I remember reading that in the small print. I think I read something that there would be a fuller release of the product of, to come. Yeah, that's what I thought. So there said. should be a full love it's and just thunder a set coming set. down the pipe. It's like a preview yeah, set. It is, um, and I guess to, it, it could also be a little bit print to order from that point of view because they know how many they've got to print now. So it makes sense. I mean, it's not it's not totally unheard of. I mean, Tops does this with the Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Like they show you the cards and then they have it for sale for a week. And then how many orders they get is how many cards they ship out. And that's the end of it. So, and you, you know, you get, you, it's nice. I like that method because it's limited to a production run number, which is always mm -hmm. really nice. It's not overprinted and you know, it, you do get parallels kind of shuffled in there. Mm. I don't know some good methods. I mean, I, I like I like the road they're going down with that stuff, and I mm. think it makes sense. And it's fun, man. It's a it's yeah. a fun little set. Yeah, it really is. And it's it's good to have some stuff out. Um, that's the main thing, and it's good from their point of view. They need they need that income stream to still be coming in from EPAC. Um, yes, and if there's not much out 
on APAC. You know, I mean, look, even a year ago, you you could browse through the Marvel cards category. Now <laughs> you can't. You know, there's like yeah. two, three products if that, uh, and one of them cyber. So you know, um, but you get an instant master set when you buy that. So it's the part of the hobby where you get an instant <laughs> master set. <laughs> Stop. Stop. That's too much optimism. Op- <laughs> that's too much. That's but too I'm much always. Optimism. But I try to always be glass half full. You know. No, no, no. I, no. Yeah, we, I don't want I mean, to be too big. No, no, no. We both um, do. I, I, I like. I was actually really. It is excited. cheeky, I I, though. It is cheeky. I was yeah, excited sorry, about Jason, cyber. About... Mm. I, I was excited about cyber before it came out. I was like, oh, I love dystopian sci-fi stuff. This would be cool, kind of like yeah. character yeah, yeah. designs. And then it wasn't. And then it felt for the price point and what it was, it was kind of a shame. Um, it was just a huge disappointment, which is why I always give cyber <laughs> a problem. But oh, everyone does, but but you know, I think what are you going to do? I don't know, man. I am I'm very hopeful from what I'm seeing and from what we've heard that things are going to start coming out mm. and printing is going to be way better. And if we we can tell that with the Spider Verse set, right? That oh, yes. control stuff wasn't there. Mm. The cars look really good in hand. They're really vibrant. Um, they're cut well for the most part from what I saw. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I, I want nice. more cards to release. I thought they I were like nice. Them. I thought even, it was a nice e- set. Even if you're not into oh, it's an S, so of course I can hold it upside down. It looks just the same. <laughs> um, but um, no, I, 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 I dig it. I've still got these Spider-Verse sat here, actually. I haven't done anything with them. I need to actually finish the set, but now it's out. And that was a quick release on EPAC. That was, what, two, three weeks after retail? And it was gone, it wasn't, right? It wasn't long at all. No, it's still going on. Um, it's still going okay. on EPAC. Yeah, yeah, but it's a decent pack I price as so. well. So thank it's you a for decent that. pack um, price. I thought it looked good. I haven't, I haven't partaked 99. yet. Yeah, I haven't partaked yet. I'm I'm trying to be really careful because yeah. I know I, I, I know my days are numbered. I so <laughs> I shouldn't have. Don't say that. Um, but anyway, set of the year. So Cyber is our set of the year this year. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, the uh, well, for me, we haven't we haven't talked about this. We agreed it, so I know I know what it's not, and it's not Spider Man Metal Universe. I think I, I listen. It's got some really really good points to it, and I'm going to come on to one of them later on in in one of the other categories. Um, it's got some really really good points to it, but it's got it's got too many things that didn't work for me, largely in terms of the character choice. Uh, and a lot of the QA issues with it, and not, not least of which the price point and what they chose to do with it on the EPAC in terms of the price point. Um, but lots of people dig it. Lots of people love it. And, you know, listen, I'm still chipping away at a base set. Um, there are subsets of that I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go to complete and I'll, I'll have it. Whether or not it'll have the longevity, if I sit back in five years' times and look back at it and think, "Why do I own this set?" You know that that that's the that's the question. You know when you find that's yourself, when you know, yeah, that's when you when find you yourself know. doing that, yeah, yeah, yeah. When um, you start trimming the collection, you're like, <clears throat> and sometimes you trim things not because you dislike them, but just because like they just don't fit what you've evolved <clears throat> into with your collection. But yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you trim things because you're like. Why am I still holding on to this? Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Or why am I even like 2001 Tops Legends base set? It's, it's a prime example of that, which is in my to go pile upstairs. Um, yeah. So it's a good, um, that's a good looking set, but yeah, it's it's the foil set's hard to get if you have that parallel. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Yeah. See, that set I'm... though, that's a that's a set for sketch cards though. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a, that's um, a real set for sketch card collectors, and I like the surfer art in there quite a bit, but. Mm. Yeah, that's a sketch mm. card set, honestly. So yeah, for Spider Man Metal. Oh God. See, so much about the state of the hobby was kind of like ruined that set. And so many things around influencers and expectations. You know, collectors and all that other yeah. stuff and expectations mm-hmm. and all that stuff kind of ruined that set. And there was a lot of um a lot of decisions being made by people that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth about that set. But what I will say about the set is this, I'm happy that the set brought in some serious collectors who actually just love collecting it. And, um, 
I think that's really nice. And I think mm. they did put out some interesting inserts in that set mm. that I think are going to do, they are going to stand. There the are some, time. There, yeah, I think there are some inserts in that set that will have true longevity. I think yeah. the base sells because they're on the same art. Possibly, no, possibly won't. No, I don't think between the base set, truthfully and honestly, and I hate bringing this up, but that image selection was pure garbage. Like yeah. that was yeah, not yeah, yeah. the way to do it. Some cards are stunning and beautiful, but truthfully, like the cropping, the image decisions, mm -hmm. and X Men did the same thing. I really don't like what they did on both those sets. It feels like someone is picking nope. those images who doesn't know Marvel characters and doesn't have an idea of the history of Marvel cards. So much of the future of this hobby is going to depend on the people who are in this hobby who understand the past and understand what it means to say, oh, this is a Marvel card, right? Like I saw some posts recently on Facebook in our group where someone was like, you know, what's the most valuable set or, you know, I'm looking to finish some things and all that stuff. And I was laughing and everyone was posting kind of like their set. <laughs> and I posted and I goes, why do you want to know? Because <laughs> I was being... I always saw that, I was, yeah. I know. I was being... I, I was, looked I was back to it since, mood. actually, just to see if anyone had actually... Uh, he did. Like, it, was, um, it, was, it, was, it was Masterpieces. It was the Masterpieces group. And someone was asking what the most valuable right. Masterpieces set was. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I had, I had to put that out there. And... <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it because I couldn't help myself and which was bad because I shouldn't because the truth of the matter is that you engage in that way. And honestly, most of the time, it's just a nice collector. And and I get it, too. I don't collect. I don't. I collect Surfer because I like Surfer. Even if it didn't cost anything, I would still collect Surfer. However, there are certain cards that I've purchased for Surfer cards only because I feel confident that I'm not like completely lighting cash on fire. That's the truth, right? Like anybody, you know, who, mm -hmm. who puts money into something and, and, you know, there's that threshold of, you know, okay, once I start putting like $300 into something or $500 or something, I really have to take a step back and be like, okay, mm -hmm. if something really, really bad happened or I needed this for a real reason, could I, could I be okay and not completely mm -hmm. lose this money out of it, blink it out of existence? Cause I'm not mm -hmm. wealthy whatsoever. Um, and you know, and it was a really nice conversation. The the person, well, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking about this. I'm trying to make this decision. And, you know, so I told them about Comp C. I told them about, you know, the different ways to, like, wait for the set because it will get cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can, like, you know, a little helpful stuff in case they didn't know, which maybe they already yeah. knew. Um, but it was a nice conversation. So, like, you know, when I think about set of the year and I think about a set that is going to be important, I, I am thinking about longevity like you. You have to, you know, I, I think, mm. I think that's important. I think because every good set that comes out for Marvel cards adds something to the Marvel card. How do you say? Ecosystem. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's something that yeah. adds to it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it builds, you know what I mean? Like, mm. Mm. I don't know, like this is a bad example, but you know, it, with movies and stuff like that, which which is you know what I professionally do, or whatever. You know, when you look at movies, I always tell I always tell people it's like you know movies speak to each other. You know, when a movie comes out and it does something differently and interesting, it's paying homage to themes and gen and 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 um, genres that came before it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it kind of continues mm -hmm. that conversation, and then it pushes the conversation forward. So it also speaks mm. to the movies that come after, you know what I mean? And I think Marvel cards, uh, a good, a good Marvel card set does the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, actually that's an interesting one. So in terms of the movies, for me, movies that have done that are things like, um, the matrix. Yeah, absolutely. Conversation you know, boost, um, yeah. I think, um, Pulp Fiction was one of those. Sure. Yeah. Possibly. Was good. Um, and yeah, it's just good dialogue. It's just very good dialogue. Good exactly. Story script. Yeah. yeah really um, good stuff. I think, you know, there were movies, you know, Die Hard, you know, in terms of action movies. I, that, especially in terms of action movies, because the movie, yeah. the script itself is so perfectly structured when you mm. look at it from like, 
an organization standpoint. You know what I mean? Like it hits mm-hmm. every beat. So it does add that kind of story construction to an action movie, you know, that that, that was done before. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, anyway, but there, there's tons of movies that do that kind of stuff, you know, mm. like Alien, right? We're fans yes. of Alien, you know, Alien, and the aliens. first Alien. For a different generation. Yeah, for a different, a different Well, way. not for a different yeah. generation, but for a ge- different genre, right? Yes. Aliens for action movies did something completely different for the monster movie mm. that had never been done before. And then Alien, that was done in the 70s, right? I mean, the idea of having a haunted house story in space was super freaking clever. Mm. And especially the way they organized those scares, those moments, that build up. That was, mm. that was really oh, clever. The bit in the ducks with Dallas is just terrifying. Oh, it's watching. a cl- killer. It's just a killer... Um, Killer, killer idea, and 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 such a good way of like, mm. because then sci-fi after that, and there was always horror in sci-fi, but then it became like it, like Event Horizon was something that came after that, and Event Horizon took oh, so much love from that Alien. So much. That's, That's a great such film. Good film. Such good. It's film. such a good film. It's a great um, horror. It's one of my favorites. But it's interesting. So in terms of cards, sets that have done that for me. I'm going to say, well, Masterpieces is obviously a massive one. Massive. Massive one in terms of 2016 I'm talking about here and 92, actually. Uh, yeah, but major I'm going to yeah. go Marvel Gems um, as well. I'm going to put Marvel Gems in that mix because Marvel Gems is such... If you if you go back and look at some of the stuff that's in that set, you properly look at it. And you think, yeah, this is actually right a forerunner of what masterpieces did, and then what other sets have built on since. Um, yeah, it's just some some really clever stuff in there. So um, I mean, so I've if- never the Marvel Gems is a set that there are some sets in Marvel cards where all the cards do something differently. And you get such a good mix. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's mm. pretty taboo to say this now, and I'm not even talking about PMGs, but like Fleer Retro, right? Like the Fleer Retro line paid so much homages to like old sets for Marvel cards. You know what I mean? It had so many different types of inserts that it became really interesting. Gems. God, the quality control on gems, the image selection, the inserts thematically made sense and they were interesting. Like gems is really, mm. really understated as how good of how good of a I, I design set that was. You open gem at the sketch card stock. I mean, you open gems and you get you get a real like this is something special. Like this, yeah, you get that special. immediate feeling. Yeah, you, um, get that immediate you feel feeling. the quality. Um, and I don't think I've seen a set that's done that. I mean, obviously, masterpiece is its own thing, but just in terms of that. Like limited. a one-off, yeah. Black Diamond. Like anime, anime the was good. Yeah. Black Diamond, one hundred percent is the same thing. Mm. Anime, mm. anime was good, but it's not the same level, just because like price point stuff like that. So it couldn't do that. But I thought anime had a hint of that, which I really liked. Mm. Um, mm. But no, Black Black Diamond. I mean, Black Diamond is like mm. you know one of the more superior sets, and I, and I don't yeah. even collect it. Like I mean, collect. <laughs> gems really i have like one card because uh, i opened that open that yeah. box with my buddy sarasota right. and like um that's and that was that was a cool experience but like black diamond is just so pretty it's mm. just such a pretty set mm. it's just it's just a pretty set and so much love and thank you yeah. was put into that i'm i don't know like i'm hoping i'm excited talking about the excitement of the future is like I want that next set. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want that. I want the next set that hits on every point. You know what I mean? Like, and hopefully we do something later in this podcast. If I can remember on things we'd want to see, like changed because I, I'm I making really, a note. Cause I've got yeah. loads of stuff here. Yeah. Cause I, I, I want to talk about sketch cards on things to change later but i don't know like i'm waiting for the next set that kind of takes me back and does that like you know Fleer ultra mm. avengers is coming out which is going to look really great and give us you mm. know the Fleer ultra spider-man vibe Fleer ultra X. am worried about so that set. i'm worried what, about oh, it. too much parallels right partly but i'm just worried about that this uh, the mock-up artwork has just got me nervous that they're they've got some oh. weird i have they've to look got at something it again. odd going on over the artwork which is actually going to impede your enjoyment of the artwork just something about it is just bugging me i have to um, look at it again 
largely because it was it was I read an article in this month's non sport update about it actually. Um anyway, so going back to the set of the so there are elements of Spidey Metal Universe that definitely come up in things that we're about to talk about. But Unbound, technically speaking, started coming out the year before. Um, so I've got to give it a very, very good nod and respectful nod towards Unbound. Um, I think the annual set came out in January, actually. Um, but I can't, it, you know, it was another annual set. It, you know, it had some really good elements to it. Um, but I can't give that a set of the year. For me, Wow, that's out of San Diego Comic Con, Marvel Studios, the uh, Disney Plus set, because it's just so satisfying. (laughs) It's just such a nice little set. I mean, there's not a lot you can go wrong with it, but building off the one they did for the Comic Con that was late in October 21, this was kind of the second part thing. And, you know, we opened this, what, last time people saw us, we opened this, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just think that this is a such a nice. They're they're, they're brilliant cards. They're just they really, really nice. Well, they, they, design, they, yeah, centering, they, very nice. They they really lean into the artwork style of of the property that they're of. Um, I mean, it's, it's very heavy in what if. I mean, that's how over half the set is what if. Um, but it's the first time you're seeing some of these new MCU characters. Yep. All, you know. First new Hawkeye, yeah, you know, the first Moon new too. First new Black Widow. That's a great looking. Card. Do you see what I mean? Um, although she was in the um, Black Widow, yeah, she was in the Black Widow set, set, but yeah, um, but you know, I love Moon Knight. <laughs> of course, Lucky the Pizza Dog. Um, but I just like you know, I like the fact they did the foil as well. You know, just an individual foil card in the pack, which it's they didn't really do for the nice, previous year. It's a nice. It's a really nice set. It's really nice. It just it's good quality. Nothing. There's nothing bad about it at all. I mean, if you don't like MCU sets, then you're out of luck. But um, I'm trying to think. My time frame is all messed up, and I have a terrible memory. But um, the Marvel Legends stuff at GameStop. That wasn't that was like a year ago now. That was yeah, that was within twenty one. Twenty one. Mostly. Yeah. I, th- I have a feeling that the final wave because wasn't the final wave wave one? Didn't wave two come out first? Wave two came out. Wave first, two, then, then wave, wave one, three, 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 then four. wave Was that fourth? Fantastic four. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I have zero. I mean, you've got them all. I have zero um, ability to. Uh, you know, I haven't had them. I haven't. I didn't want to get them. Um, well, that was. Yeah, I can't remember exactly when they came out. This is a good shout. You're going to go and get so Marvel Legends. I have it here with me, but I don't know if it goes to 2022, so we don't have to show yeah, it. Yeah, I can't remember. But what I was gonna, I don't remember either. But I was gonna say is that. Marvel Legends was Legends uh, series mm. had the same quality of the mm. ones we opened the the con exclusive the Comic Con ones yeah 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 they mm. just they feel like they had the same kind of love and attention to them like I don't know the Marvel Legends series thing is really one of my favorite sets in a long time um, the person who architect you know who structured the set and came up yeah. with it we know and just killed it like it was just fun and yeah. made sense it was simple but like if you look yeah. at the card design of the set and i'm not pumping the set the set's not an expensive set mm, it's the gamestop uh one isn't yeah, it it's so the just so one. Yeah, yeah. this is the one that came out 2021 and possibly a little bit into 2022 four right. waves of cards that were available through gamestop and you had a regular version then you had four versions as well yeah i just i really liked it because of this like it mm. did the stack of heroes for each each wave had a different stack of heroes mm-hmm. and the foils just in this purple area. And nice. I just thought thematically, you know what I mean? It feels simple, yeah. it feels clean. And I feel like sometimes people these cards get designed. They get over designed sometimes. They get over designed. And mm. it just feels like 
you're collecting a set that's been like yeah catered it was so funny an actor just posted what the next masterworks for star wars is going to look like oh really he, okay yeah because he signed the cards and he posted it and he sure. showed it and i posted in the comments and it got a lot of likes but i wasn't trying to be controversial but i was just trying to be honest it just felt when you look at the card you're like oh this is designed for influencers this is designed to put on YouTube <laughs> and to make yeah, these yeah. kind of like artsy kind of what a faux celebrities or eccentric types to be about the set. But there's no like, yeah, there's no, there's no soul in it. There's no spirit. You know what I mean? Here's it just the feels thing. Like, Here's yeah. the thing. Yeah. You've, you've hit the nail on the head, right? <laughs> this is interesting. Lost suffered a little bit from this as well. When you're around long enough making a product that you start to cater your product to what the market are, or what you think the market wants. Now, obviously, that's always going to be an ongoing case it's about feedback with customers and consumers and things like that. But sounds to me like that set and um, uh, Spidey Metal Universe, I'm sorry, but that was kind of on that wavelength. It was, it was kind of they leaned into the pump. I think, I think, I think they understood. And I don't think, I, I don't think I predicted anything wrong at all. No, I think, I think they it's the instinctive thing to do. The people who shout loudest market. are the ones that you hear. And the people shouting loudest are the ones that get in all the clicks. And so you think, okay, that's what people want. And metal from the standpoint of a design or, you know, uh, ar 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 um, you know, architecture of that set, it makes a lot of sense to have PMGs because they're gems, right? The metal, mm. precious metal. Like there's a way like platinum portraits, platinum, like that makes a lot of sense and it's really great. But now it's starting to feel like it's gone from X-Men metal being like, hey, isn't this kind of like a cool idea, especially for X-Men? You know what I mean? But now you're having decisions that are like, well, if we don't come up with a set that has this type of inserts in it, no one's going to buy it. And I, I feel like, you know, company has to make its money. It has to happen, blah, 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 blah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hope along the way, and we were, we were going to say we were going to talk about this, that like there are certain inserts in Spider-Man Metal where you're like, this is 100% from a vantage point of someone who understood Marvel cards. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like this was designed, this was thought up from a, a, in a real way from someone who's a fan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And oh, other yeah. things are just being done to kind of check a check a box, which I get. Yeah. I again, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not mm -hmm. a diss on that. This is more of this is an mm -hmm. understanding and a because you know most of these end of the year episodes for all of our listeners, it helps Ian and I kind of go over in our heads kind of where the hobby's going and how we feel about the hobby mm. and, you know, hope, you know, trying to also talk about this in a way that, you know, trying to tap into the thoughts that all of you are also having, because we're all collectors, we're all in the same boat. Mm. So it's kind of a way of having this kind of like larger conversation. You know what I mean? About yeah, uh, things absolutely. That are coming. Absolutely. You know? Um, so I don't know if that's something you concur on for the set of the year, because normally we agree on it. We often have different ideas about it, but I don't know. But I I don't know what my there set are so of the few year candidates. Really there are so one. few candidates. That's the know. thing. I don't I don't think I have one, to be honest yeah. with you. I liked Which I liked Spider-Verse, but I don't I don't think I have because you, you sent me the thing and I have been thinking about it, but yeah. I don't know. Nothing really like I like the set that you have, the Marvel Marvel Studios when I do, but I don't know. I, I'm honestly, this year has been a year of exploring, of going backwards for me. You know what I mean? Mm. It's about like, it's about going back to the cards from the '90s. You know, it's yeah. about it's about going back to cards and being like, okay, I really love this card. Going back to your roots. Going back to my roots and going like, yeah, you know, I really love ever. this card. Mm. Things are things are getting cheaper mm. in terms of like, you know, what people want for like a 10 of a card or mm. you know what people want for a really cool variant of a card yeah yeah and yeah. before it gets unobtainable or before i get too tired to continue <laughs> searching every 20 minutes on ebay because i'm getting i'm getting i'm getting to that point now where i'm just like you know what and it's funny too because i remember coming into this hobby talking to collectors who were like 
been collecting far longer than me. And they were just like, no, I'm only searching for two or three things. And I was so in the hobby that I didn't catch that. I was like, well, these guys and, and women, they, they have, you know, they feel really good about where they are. So they really just check those two or three things and that's it. And I kind of, I think that's where I'm getting to now because, and I'm trying to be proactive where like, okay, the collection with how I have it, I want to make sure I hit this, this, and this, mm. and I can feel, I can feel good about this. I can start mm. enjoying it and not feel like I have to have been like yes, running to like build the collection that I've been dreaming about for years and years and years. Absolutely. Um, so my next one that I wrote down, I've, I've written down best card in brackets new and or one you became aware of this year. That's a good one. So I'm going to start with thinking about best card because while Spidey Metal Universe isn't my set of the year, I think the Planet Metal are gorgeous. They're really nice. The Planet Metal cards in that set are just lovely. And I have to say, I think the Skyscraper Shadow Boxes are very clean as well. They're very cool. After the, after the disappointing color box that were in the last Premiere set, I think you know to have a really nice looking shadow box yeah you know it's a really it's, uh, nice looking stuff is yeah. is nice um so yeah so those are my new ones <clears throat> i do however, i have however acquired something while you're still thinking about your answer on that one it's taken me this long i was <laughs> this many years old before I finally acquired my first hollow blast. Wow. And it's, it's impossible to see, especially on this camera. They're quite subtle. There we go. And that's Scarlet Spider and Spidey. Wow. Uh, you can just about see them there. It's, it's better if you get it. You're a How do you feel about it in person? I haven't seen one of those in person. Uh, I like it. I really like it. You've got to be so careful to get the lighting right. I'm just going to just manage to get this. Isn't that one that works better in up and down? But no, it's not working at all for the camera. Um, I've got three of them um, for Flare 95. Um, I really want the ones from Flare Ultra Spider Man 95. That's what I keep hearing. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I've, got, good. I've got Star Lord and no, Cable versus Nimrod. Could swear hmm. that's Star Lord. Anyway, uh, Spidey versus Scarlet Spider and Daredevil versus Juggernaut. Has Daredevil ever had a rumble against Juggernaut? Or am I just missing things? But, Actually, that's really cool. You know, um, I like the street level like, heroes. Uh, I don't know why I'm <laughs> why I'm trying to show them to come. They clearly don't work. Anyway, I picked them up recently in a, in a cheap UK lot. I just saw, you know, most of the cards were dog-eared and things like that. And then yeah. I just saw those poking out in the photo. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take a chance on that lot. Because I can see something shiny in the picture, um, and you know, nice I think looking. it's just nice to actually finally get you know. Because I've now I've set my limits as to what I'm collecting nineties wise. I've just got to finish out those sets. Yeah. So, and this, this actually touches on personal hobby achievement of the year, um, which I've got coming up as a category. Um, <laughs> I finally, I know it sounds ridiculous. I finally completed the base set for Marvel Universe ninety four which I've had like, incomplete for years and years and years. And I finally oh, wow. completed the base set. I mean, I still That's need to get cool. the holograms and some of the chase, but, you know, little things like that. that little later. victories. Um, That's sick. That's yeah. really cool. I like 94mm so much. Such yeah. a pretty set. A Marvel really Universe. pretty set. Is- Marvel Universe, sorry. I don't know mm, why I said I meant, right. I meant Marvel Universe. I do like that um, set. But, yeah. So, uh, how, uh, best card, new and or one you became aware of this year. Got any you can think oh, of for that? New card. Because you've I seen mean, some cards this year, because you've been out and about. Yeah. So uh, you'll have seen a lot of cards that you wouldn't necessarily have been collecting or... Mm-hmm. I, I came out. in contact with a lot of cards this year, funny enough. Um, uh, uh, this is tough. <laughs> it is really a tough, tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one, because like... So I remember seeing you holding like the red spec from Eugene and things like that. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I've cards, seen but... those are amazing cards. I did really well with 2018. I had a red spectrum. 
two red spectrums for 2018 and i had a bunch of other cards so i've seen red specs and autos and stuff like that well you have the and, two that i i bought with you for a bit that's right that's right i, I, I had, had those Falcon, for a bit too that's right and the and um not not zemo who was it wonder man wonder man that's it yeah those are good too those are good cards yeah i had that's right i've so i've seen those seeing eugene's cards was fun really fun seeing um spider-man metal for the first time in person over there was really fun i mean i like i like platinum portraits you know i i don't like the the money and the attention they get but i like I like the idea of those cards a lot more in person. Like mm. when you see the silver on them. I've and not stuff. seen. I've not seen one at all. When you see, I mean, one I've seen them person, online, but I've not seen them in person. They're way better in person because, like, you can see so how I. intricate the die cut thing is. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> how interesting the die cut thing is. Like that was really cool to see. It's 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 you know it's really an unobtainable card sometimes. Those those mm. platinum portraits. I mean, they got they got cheaper now, but. I just didn't have a character in them. Like I was really hoping that a spot would be a platinum portrait. So I thought that would be a really cool concept. I'm so glad spot. Cap wasn't in that. I'm so glad Cap wasn't yeah, in that. Yeah, you must be really relieved. Oh. Um, but yeah, I was Shout hoping for going. things like that. Yeah. I think the card that I rediscovered and really fell in love with was the um, the Silver Age cards, the tributes to Jack Kirby. Oh, just, interesting. Not, those. I honestly thought you were going to say something else then. What were you thought I was going to say? I thought you were going to say the hologram, the Spidey versus Venom hologram. That's a beautiful card. That's a crazy beautiful card. Because you've had some love for that this year. But yeah, no, that Silver Age um, insert set is... I got amazing. one for $10 at a card wow. show for $10. And I sent it as one of the test cards to CGC mm. and... Um, I just think that those those holograms are special. Like the the mm. you know, and they they do again the similar thing in Marvel Universe, and they do, you know, they do it again in Amazing Spider Man. I think that kind of like, I mean, they're just they're just really great. They're they're statues basically yeah. that are being rendered. I mean, they're gorgeous. You know what I mean? But I was mm. looking at the ones that really took me back. Like I had a friend of mine who sent me two boxes of Silver Age. And I've never opened Silver Age before. And he let me do them on camera. It was really fun. And I came across those cards that are in that insert set that are all silver. And yeah. they have the character, a lot of silver, <laughs> what I'm talking about here. But also the gold ones from MCC 98, too. Like, yes. Those cards are stupid nice. Like when you look back lovely. and yeah. they are, they're really cool. And like the art choices are really interesting. So I made sure to get a surfer for that silver age set and get it like in a high grade. I got like mm. 20, 15 examples of the stupid card to like try to figure it out. <laughs> How um, many? Like 20, 15. Oh. But they were like, they were like a dollar each. I w I'm not really hoarding them, you know, but like yeah. if anyone needs one, I'll send one out. But I just wanted to try this to get a, a, a high end people. example because they stick and all that stuff. But that was like an old set where I was just like, okay, this is really cool. Let me see if I can grab this. And a really nice quality card. Not that you need it in a nice quality, but no, 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 no. I'm only hunting one character, so I was able to do it. You know, I finally found all my boxes of dupes and things. <laughs> um, and in here, somewhere, if I can remember my crazy filing system that I developed in my head, right. which which hand is which? Where am I starting? In here, I do have one of those Silver Age cards that you're talking about. Um, nice. No, yeah. that's a Gambit hologram. <laughs> I love Gambit hologram. That's, a that's Gambit like the hologram. best Gambit oh. image ever. Um, where is it? It's in this row. I know it is. Here we go. That's the one you're talking about. That's the one. That's my baby. Right Heroes there. of the Silver Age. That's crazy. Beautiful. Just see not. Yeah, I used to have um, the whole set, but I sold it to uh, sold it to Amanda. The tribute to Drac Kirby set subset. That's another one that's killer, gorgeous as well. Killer, killer, killer set. Um, so pretty. Like you look at Spider Man for that, and it's just all Jack Kirby. Like it's like that's so, the one. That's it. That's the guy. Yeah. These are just a few like, dupes I've got left over. So that is just a crazy nice card. Like I still can't card. believe how nice it is. I might have to keep these. They're nice, got? man. I got like, the Captain I, I America. Was... 
those really took me back. I was really surprised. I mean, I knew them from the surfer, but I never got to. Ch- yeah, dude, look at that, man. You can look how cool that is. Fantastic four. And cap. there's a gal. There's a Galactus and Silver Surfer. I need. If you have a double. Where's that gone? <laughs> but I, I think I that's. Think I think those are I great. Do. And they stick. Like I have. Yeah. I, they. They. They're. They're not going to be around. Unfortunately. Uh, no. The um. The problem is with that set as you remember i bought loads of loose packs yeah beautiful right. last of silver age and i opened them all um the, uh, funny enough, the chase cards didn't stick but the base cards were terrible absolutely terrible Completely they were stickier right. than a sticky thing from sticky land um so sir stick a lot i remember sir so, so stick, yes. so stick a lot that's what they used to call me on the dating apps um so the uh, biggest hobby moment Ugh. of the year i i've got i've got one for you please you go first cgc cards getting into marvel that was really fun which isn't me being biased or anything like that but i genuinely think it's exciting you know having now got my first slabs in hand i mean they're lovely people happy. are really excited about it and it makes sense i'm i'm happy i'm really happy about it i worked i worked really hard to make sure I, I don't know. You know, I mean, you know, I, I try to make sure that was really worth it to people because grading is expensive. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it, it's, it's a thing to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's a real, it's a real decision, but I don't know. I, I just wanted, I just wanted it to like, I wrote that press release for the CGC thing. Mm. And like, I really just wanted it to like, I made sure not to show PMG. <laughs> Like I wanted to, I wanted yeah, people to see nice Marvel card. cards, man. I really wanted people to see Marvel cards for that. Beautiful. I just think they're cool. I think it's really cool. You know, I'm 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 around that as well. Seeing them at New York Comic Con that that was another big thing for me. Is oh yeah, I it bet. was so nice to have so many friends there and different people from different parts of the hobby, mm-hmm. and to kind of like have a booth there. Which, mm. you know, what cards have ever been shown at New York Comic Con, really? You know what I mean? Like, it's in recent memory. You know what I mean? Like, nothing. You know what I mean? Like, you, the, literally, literally, we were the only places that had cards. Nowhere else. And it was mm. coincidentally really interesting because Marvel, the Marvel booth, did pins that were yes. homages to the cards. Marvel Universe and we 92. Shot, mm. And, like, the Black Suit Spider Man. The original artwork was at the booth. Oh wow! Wow, um, I didn't know this. It was just a coincidence. It was a, a really ridiculous, serendipitous kind of craziness. Oh, amazing! Yeah, so yeah. So they yeah. came out with those pins, and they were exclusive, and everybody was buying them. And then they would come to the booth, and you know, we would have the pin in the display case, like mm-hmm. we bought one to show. Um, me, me, and the guys, Matt Fuller, and you know everybody, and we put it in the thing so people could see kind of the connection there were so many people looking at that original art i it's funny because i don't know and maybe this is just me in my head and it might be but like i don't know i think of marvel card collectors as like art collectors i see them understanding the artist i see them understanding the character i don't know like that's how i always viewed it that's Mm -hmm. when when i have my Mm -hmm. the most interesting conversations i have with collectors like you and others Mm. is with collectors who understand why this was the way it is and why the art is here and who drew that and what's the significance and like what is this moment in the character's past or personality that suits this mm-hmm. work you know what mm-hmm. i mean like that to me is like that 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 is the conversations i want to be having within like the hobby that i enjoy you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah i'm excited absolutely. i was excited i'm trying to think i think a really big moment in the hobby for probably for bad worse than good was the price point of Spider-Man Metal on EPAC. Like that was a moment that was really kind of eye-opening for me as a collector. That really that really put me in a very different position of understanding where things were gonna go for a little while now. You know what I mean? It it, it and, and in some strange way I've actually hit up a few character collectors and had some really interesting conversations with them about like how to move forward 
as a character collector, which is kind of cool. I, I don't mean to talk about this with such seriousness. <laughs> I just mean like, I just, you know, just thinking about like, how can I still enjoy this? Yes. Without a losing friends, right? Like actually still talking to people because I, I can't stand most people in the hobby now. And <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, can't stand You're, certain this, like this things touches in the hobby on so anymore. many things I've got coming up. Yeah, carry on. It, you know what I mean? Like I can't stand yeah. that anymore. Like there's so yeah. much weird language and stuff going on, and it's just not mm-hmm. for me. And then how do I still collect and hashtag without driving myself insane? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In this hobby and like that price point that moment yeah. made me have to rethink these things and and yeah. i think i'm i think i understand them in a, in a very positive way actually not mm. that i'm happy the price is that what i mean is like positive as like i think i'm finally figuring out how can i enjoy the hobby without necessarily having yes. to be in the belly of the beast yes does that make sense yes oh yes 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 yeah i know what you mean um Personally, for me, I've also got to say my first US con, my first proper con, I would say. Congratulations again, dude. So that was just incredible. Like some of the best people there. Like oh, Vega man. had nothing yeah, but yeah. amazing things to say. Oh, George like, Vega, yeah. Ian. Ron so Leary. You were there with Pam. Joe Rubenstein, like, Rene Wittstatter. Rene. I mean, like Star Trek, you met like Riker. Yeah. Like, I mean, yep. like, just Joseph cool. Pierre, man. I met. Yeah, it was, it was just great. It was just great, you know, to be That's able awesome, to dude. see these people. And Frank Cho, even though I confused his work with Terry Dodson. That's so right, we Frank Cho. <laughs> anyway, um, me. I was talking to Joe Jusco. I've got another moment for me personally. Um, yeah, dude, that was, was crazy. just great. It was just great having a couple of hours to chat with him. Um, and uh, top of it, I, it's got to say, is opening that blaster box with Molly Rose on Instagram. That was hilarious. That was lovely. That we was loved so it. Nice. We loved it. So yeah, she's Jones into open some more stuff. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping if I can if I, if I can find another blaster uh, near to retail price, I'll I'll do that again. Um, but uh, but odd to that, I don't know. Um, but that touches on a biggest hobby moment that isn't a personal one, but it's a general you know that I think is a cross hobby one for Marvel cards. Yeah, is blasters. Yeah, the Spider-Man Metal Universe. I think that's such a positive step. Um, I, I'm not going to repeat my thoughts about people who bought them specifically just to resell. Um, that's that's documented on a previous episode. But for those who were lucky to get some and enjoy opening it either for themselves or with their family and or kids, it was just brilliant. It was just fun. It was a nice, affordable way to open them. You know, felt it was a special, special thing. I think, I think that's more of that needs to happen mm. for this hobby because <laughs> truthfully, it's not about the money so much about hobbies now, which has taken them from being hobbies to something completely else is that people follow the money. People follow what people collect yep. and it inspires yep. them to put money into certain cards. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times Ian and I have spoken to artists who work on these card sets and their hope is that they go into the hands of kids because most of them either have collected or understood that getting that artwork in their hands as kids inspired them on a really cool Mm -hmm. journey and Mm -hmm. put things in their head that made them think differently about art people personalities heroes villains right Mm -hmm. they set up fun adventures for people um and unless these cards are put back into the hands of these young collectors a young hobbyist i -hmm. should say because i think i think the word has changed right i think it's i think it's become who's a hobby who who actually is like part of a hobby and who is like a collector you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, there's weird things have changed with the word. Like I never thought mm. certain words mm. would have certain connotations to them, but they've changed over the last two years. Mm. Mm. And I'm excited to see us do more with actual kid giveaways and not people who say, Hey, I have these kids. Anybody have any like green PMGs? My kids are huge fans of them. 
I bet they are. <laughs> you know I'm sure I mean? they are. Yeah, I'm sure no, they I are. don't have any. But, I don't have any. If I did, I'd have sold them to pay for the kids' yeah. tuition. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. What I want to see more of, and maybe I'm moving forward because I'm sure that's a question. Is like, what do you want to move? What do you want to see happen? Oh, we've got it there. coming. We've got it coming. Okay, I'll stay quiet. We've got no, it coming. Good. No, 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 no. Trust me. We've got it. I'll stay quiet. I'll um, stay quiet. Your personal favorite collection piece acquired. Oh. <laughs> now, as I've already prepped for this, do you want me to show mine while you think about it? <laughs> okay. So uh, I've got to start with the Planet Metal that we talked about uh, from Fleer Ultra Spider, uh, not Fleer Ultra, from Spidey Metal Universe. And I'm also going to go with the Thanos Red Exquisite that I acquired this year from Japan. Uh, Those exquisites, man. Oh, just beautiful. I wish I had a better webcam. Sorry, folks. There we go. You catch it just right. You Look see that. that. See that right there on that red. That's uh, uh, stunning. Killer. Stunning. It was inevitable, eh, Josh? Um, what else did <laughs> uh, I quite? Um, uh, and Black Cat's Preliminary from Masterpiece that was 2020, awesome. which I don't have here because it's in my... Everything's all over the place because we're still... You know, until the the studios converted, but the the other thing I will say it's taken me this long to get any tier fours from masterpieces oh. twenty sixteen. I've got two purples. Damn! Finally, so good. Um, sorry, it's in the sleeve there, so it's not not there. We go. Wow. Now, I've got two. I've got the Mephisto and I've got the Doom, so probably the lower end of them in terms of the price points. Uh, the Doom actually is... People are is, sleeping on Doom, man. ...is damaged. It's It's got a crease along the front, you see? Oof. Yeah, um, I, just, I just caught it. But, you know, but I don't care yeah, because... Happened. No, who uh, gives a shit? But like, I, yeah, that but that's now? the thing. That's I don't think card for a crease. Yeah, I, it's weird, and it's, it's not got no bend on it. So it yeah, must I know. I'm just looking at it now. Like, oh, the hell? Um, but it's... Um, but you know what? I don't. I don't care because it's kind of in its forever binder. No, it's forever yeah, home. Cares, it's forever binder. You know, it's part of my set. So, yeah, um, I'm not fussed about the fact that it's. Um, I can't even get it back in its sleeve now. There we go. Uh, and the Mephisto, of course, which has got a teeny tiny surfer on it as well. Little uh, surfer. Little surfer. Little surfer. Little surfer. Is that little what you, surfer. Is that what you call him? Um, <laughs> Hello, little surfer. <laughs> Hello, little surfer. There he is. There he is. Look at him. Look at him flying through space. He's always oh, cute. Oh, he's got a cute little He's a ball. flying. He's so kind. He's, he's a, a flying surfer. surfer. Why have we gone Irish? <laughs> Oh, Why am I Irish? <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a... <laughs> terrible. God, terrible God. accents. It's, so it's really, 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 really funny. Uh, but anyway, yes, so there's my uh, 2016 binder. Uh, I shall put that all nice. away with my, nice lovely, with my lovely empty wrappers at the front in there. That's the way to do it. That's mm -hmm. so funny. That's the way to do it, man. Mm -hmm. That's yep. the way to there do it. There we go. That's all right, I don't. Um, I've got my final That's pieces. Right. Actually, right. <laughs> can I just say my, my other achieve, hobby achievement of the year for me is the uh, £31 box from ComC that just arrived with my buddy, Donnie, which he's about to ship over to me via UPS. £31 which is however many pounds. kilos, which is kind of like as big as, <laughs> it's almost as much as my daughter weighs. Um, but um, but that That's has awesome. my final pieces from MM2016 tier one to three, which I believe is a Thanos and something else. Can't remember now. Possibly a Ghost Rider base. And then that's my tier that's one right, three nice done from too. MM2016. So, yes, very happy about that. So, yeah, um, I mean, obviously, the loads, but those are the ones that stuck out when I was thinking about it. And I might have a different answer tomorrow. <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, those are great, man. Those are great options. Yeah, I mean, I got some pieces for the Mandalorian collection that I'm really happy about. Mm hmm. I can share. And then I can share with you guys. Oh, can't Steve wait. Thing. But um yeah, Mandalorian pieces was really cool. Yeah. Um, 
grading cards with the CGC was really amazing. Mm-hmm. Like that, that was really cool. Um, we actually did Star Wars as well. Oh, that's just launched, isn't it? It just launched. So my buddy gifted me something with Star Wars, which I'm really grateful for because I didn't have it. So like getting this card graded was really cool. Oh, beautiful. So that's this really... that so that's the Stanley Mike Wiringo signed redemption from uh, Marvel Creators Collection ninety eight, yeah. Beautiful card. Beautiful. Great set. Stunning great card. set. Gorgeous card. Yeah. It's just a great set. It's just a great it's a great card. It's such an mm-hmm. important card to our hobby. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, 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 I think a lot about that card, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about things like that. But I, I really love that card for personal things. I always. Yeah. I love that. I love that that sketchboard set because I love yes. preliminary art personally. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm just glad to have it there. My buddy gifted me this Force Moon collectibles. Beautiful. Moon. And uh, I didn't have it, and he knows I'm a Mandalorian collector. He was like, "I'm going to give you the first appearance." No. Nice. So I thought that was really cool. And it's fun just to have the card. Like, yeah, I was, I've had it on my watch list forever, and it's just so cool to see it. So I thought that was really cool. And then I got two other Mandalorian pieces. And then Surfer card wise, it's tough because you know Surfer's banned, so there hasn't been a lot. But I've gotten like two sketch cards from Surfer that I've been looking at for like. Like I told you already. So mm-hmm. those are in the collection. And then I got this sketch card. Nice. Nice. Which I'm really grateful for. I did not think that's a sketch it. card. I know that's saying it's that's actually extraordinary. Really yeah. Angel Alvarez. Wow. Folks, for those listening, this will be on the tasting notes or just fast forward on the YouTube video um, yeah. for, for uh, want of my own sanity. That's beautiful. It's really nice. I got that card. Because here's the thing that I started doing with the collections is that I just don't buy often at all. Mm, like mm. I save pictures on my desktop. <laughs> and I'm Your stealing. desktop. Your desktop I, must I, be a carnage. It's a mess. Yeah. I, I, I basically just save pictures of things that I, if I had all tons of money, I could buy like sets and things like that. Mm-hmm. Just because I, I like still looking at the art, but I can't, I can't buy everything, especially like with the stuff I'm buying. So I have to be really careful. And then this is the second one. Oh, look at that. Which is Beautiful also a sketch. sketch. Of um, uh, how did you pronounce his name? Jin Pedro Pasquale. No, 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 the uh, character, but yeah, Jin. Oh, uh, 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 Din Jaren. Din, Jaren, oh, yeah, okay, him. Have you? Uh, <laughs> did you watch? Sorry, when I see him out of his out of his thing like that, I'm going back to that um, unbearable weight of massive talent movie with him and yes. Nicolas Cage. Have you seen yes. that yet? It's after my recommendation. Good. It's so good. So good. It's such so a good, good film. Such, such a good, a good film. film. Uh, so, so that's that's the movie recommendation of the year, folks. The unbearable weight of right massive there. talent with Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal. <laughs> um, that's astonishing. Um, I did have a couple of other things, but I didn't write anything down for them, so I've got no idea. But I had biggest hobby regret. Hobby regret. Regrets. <laughs> I don't have any. I've I don't, had I don't, a I don't have any. No. Um, biggest WTF moment. Oh, getting Silver Surfer one. That was a, I didn't think that would happen for a long time, but I think you mean more like what's wrong <laughs> to with, be honest people? with you. Uh, well, no, actually, can I go back to biggest um, uh, hobby moment of the year? Can I just yes. give a special shout out for Eugene going to the national with a massive, massive display of some of the best cards in Marvel cards and none of them were so <laughs> It was just a show display thing. <laughs> oh, I've just got a hats off to the guy for, for A, having the stones to do it, B, having the cards to do it, and C, um, educating and just engaging with people. Um, I so think it's really yeah. funny hearing his stories of like mm. who, who said what to him, yeah. who was upset. <laughs> yeah. That kind yeah. of stuff yeah. that cracks me up. Yeah. And who yeah. gave him crap for that? And oh, yeah. Definitely. That people did. Funny. People did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, I'm going to uh, bring it down slightly, then we'll bring it back up a bit. Um, sadness is for the year. There's, there's two big people in the hobby past this year. Um, back in January, we lost Adam Conklin, a sketch card artist, yeah. who was due to come on the podcast, actually. He was hitting us up relentlessly to come on the pod, and we just couldn't 
get it to work schedule wise and then unfortunately i think covid um i think covid got him um which is a shame so um condolences to his his family uh, but also big character collector chris wiseman passed away um a few months ago um and really young daughter as well and his wife so um condolences to them but he was a big angela collector i remember um, i spoke to lovely him. guy lovely guy we had lots awesome of guy awesome lots of guy. conversations i've got you know i'm going to my messenger now and just pull put up conversations um so yeah so seriously just you know which leads me into lessons i learned this year um for want of trying and just trying to be more together with it, it's become, for, for me anyway, my perception is hobbies become a l- little bit more tribal this year, a um, little bit more divisive. That's a good word for that. Um, and very judgmental as well. Um, and I'm probably, you know, <laughs> in my less restrained moments, I'm probably just as guilty of that as anyone else. But it seems to be, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why it is. I mean, to be honest with you, I think there's a certain because... amount. Well, I think yeah, I think there's a certain amount of frustration with the lack of product, so people's energy is diverted elsewhere. So there's that. There have been some wolves in sheep clothing, and then some just wolves in wolves clothing that have come into the hobby and done crazy stuff and um, and damaging yeah, stuff. Yeah, and basically par- parasitically used it for their own ends, and then off onto another section of the hobby um and you know and there are what galls me what really galls me is that there are people who are actively promoting marvel cards and hats off to them who are still very much in the hobby who aren't one of these people who've come in and bounced who refer to these people as friends openly and you can see them type it and personally that that confuses me um you know, people can have do what they want, they have whatever relationships they want. That's absolutely fine. But I just think it's disingenuous to say that you're really promoting the hobby and yet you'll happily support and engage with people who are, in my view, detrimental to the hobby. Now, that's my view, so it might not be their view, in which case, I'm, you know, doesn't matter. But I, I just find it, I find, I think that if you have, created a platform for yourself as we have with this podcast but if you are creating any type of content and you've created that platform i just think that there is a certain responsibility you have to the bigger picture about how you conduct yourself and how you interact with people who haven't conducted themselves in a way that's that's as positive I mean, yeah. I'm trying to be 100%. careful how I phrase that, but no, that's, it's, it's, sorry, it's, that's just it's, come it's, off the top of my head, but it's just, it's just, no, that's that's the, I mean, me. it's, you're right. You're a hundred percent right. You know, I mean, I think part of it is that people want to see the good in people. And I think truth becomes relative in the sense that like, you know, what's true for one person is not true for someone else. Yeah. And I think a lot of people reason away certain things you know what i mean Mm. in their heads so they make accommodations and they do things that seem very much like well you just said this and then you're doing this you know what i mean very contrary and stuff like that yeah and and again i'm just i'm just also trying to be careful because i you know this podcast has never been a podcast to like like i bitch more than anybody but like more than ian (laughs) from what i've said and stuff like that especially out loud um but for me, you know, at first it was strange. Like, you know, speaking from my personal experience, everyone was doing like content and like opening product and hanging out and all this other stuff. And I was around, I wanted to hang out too. It was fun. You know what I mean? And then very quickly I realized that when you agree to be with someone else on a channel or you do something with someone else, even with this podcast, even with everything I've done in the hobby, I've just become more, I don't want to be in a position where like I can be friendly with somebody 
and then I'm on something with somebody and they say something that I don't agree with and I'm on their channel or on a channel and I'm going to make it about me and my issue with something. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, it's like go, it's like mm-hmm. being a house guest. You don't want to go to someone's house that you're like lukewarm about and then be an a hole. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's that kind of thing in my head is like, I don't want to be in those positions and do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I, I, I basically stopped doing video stuff, you know what I mean? Cause like I've, I've just stopped and, and not for any reason or for anybody at all. It's just been more like, I really had to kind of sit back and be like, you know what? I really, I just don't want to be a part of it. You know, I got, you know, I posted something on my YouTube channel, my personal channel, my stuff about, you know, Marvel cards are not sports cards. And somebody went on there and I was like, oh, you just said this, 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 you know, very accusative. And I asked them to come on the channel and kind of talk to me what they were talking about. They never did. And, you know, they never did. And they kind of dropped it or whatever. And it's very strange now to be far away from all that stuff, doing other things that I think are interesting and fun and kind of just enjoying myself and kind of getting away from it's, it's weird that it's become a thing that I can't even like do anything and just drop in on a channel or like hang out with people without, Mm. you know what I mean? Getting some kind of slack for it or whatever the case may be. And there is, you know, there's a lot of different people doing a lot of weird things. You know what I mean? Even mm-hmm. people who don't have socials, who I know personally, who also are invested in a set or invested in a particular card that they have multiple copies of, right? Or they're invested into a grading company, right? And they're there this way. And then they're saying these things. Like there's a lot of people who are A, either really unhappy with their jobs, B, trying to do something in a influencer social media way so they're trying to do all these different things you know what i mean or c they have strong personalities and they're just not being agreeable or understanding about what other people collect like i think one of the biggest uh wtf or, or, moments or d massively or d. just disrespectful to other people. massively disrespectful <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying to ignore those idiots because i just don't care to talk about them but like like the other thing was like at New York Comic Con, someone asked me, and I won't say their name, but it, it bothered me actually. And you know, this podcast, I'm, I'm very honest about this podcast. Maybe I shouldn't say certain things out loud, but I don't care. And they said, and hopefully I didn't say this already, but you know, they were like, they were like, you know, why do you say special all the time? You know, when you say special, you come off really inauthentic. You know what I mean? It, it sounds like, how can every card be special? And this was like in the middle of trade night at New York Comic Con. And I remember them saying that to me. And in the moment, I kind of looked at them and I was like, and my first gut reaction would be like, why are you so A, worried about what I'm saying? Right? Why is it so important to you? Yeah. Why, why is that so important what I'm saying? Right? Who cares what I say? I, I say this stuff just because you know, I'm in it. What, mm. what do I know? Mm. I don't know any better than anybody. I don't spend copious amounts of money on you know what I mean? like there's you know what do i know i'm not anybody <laughs> um and then two i was like why do you want to shit on somebody else like why is it necessary for you to have this competition why is it necessary for you to look at your cards and say well at least i'm collecting right i don't know what that person over there is collecting but at least my collection is doing something that like is better well, it's right? right for him doesn't make sense <laughs> and it's very it's and and I think you get into those kind of conversations and people get upset about certain things because they're putting a lot of money into something. And some cards are so rare that you inevitably end up in competition, whether you want to be or not, you know, you end up in a competition scenario. And that's kind of why I just did the character collection thing, the top 10. And I said, no sketches, no one of ones, no number cards, no... Uh, I said a few other things to yeah. kind of just pr- prevent the stereotypical things we always see on social. Cause I was like, let's, let's get back. Like, like, you know, let's get back to its roots. You back, know, to base. Around, back to base. 
that needs to be a t-shirt. That's amazing. Yep. I love it. Oh, welcome. Anyway, up. but you know, things, things like that. And I, I, I know I went off on a little um, rant, but yeah, I don't know. That's part of it for me. You know, good. 2023. Yay. Oh. Um, goals for 2023. Have fun. To enjoy Have collecting, fun. maybe. <laughs> to enjoy collecting, maybe. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about <laughs> at the end of the day. I mean, I don't know. I kind of want to be... I, I just want to enjoy it. I just want to have fun mm. with it. I just, I don't want to be in a situation. I don't want to be around the crap anymore. It's, it's, it's only going to get uglier in some regards mm. in terms of prices and sets, like when the next masterpiece drops or oh. when any of these sets that people yeah, are yeah, speculating yeah. on be pre prior, it's only mm. going to get gross and, 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 and worse uh, in certain regards. But I think I'm, I'm trying to come at it with very close friends where hopefully I just don't feel the effects. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, again, my big goal since last year has been really just trying to show people what's interesting about this hobby mm -hmm. and, you know, just sharing what I like about it and that's it. Yeah. What are my goals? What are your goals? What are my goals? I don't know. I'm looking around me at a plethora of beautiful cards. Um, I would like to just be able to stay in the game a little bit because it's going to be a tough few years financially for me, um, I think. so. Um, I think it's going to be for a lot of people. It is. It a is. A lot of people. It is. I, I'm, I'm absolutely to the point at which I've got here, I've typed up hobby break, question mark. I know I don't Ooh. think I can ever completely do so, but I I will be very 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 uh, on vapors for 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 a while. So it's going to be like just cheap local wins on eBay, that kind of thing. A lot more trading. I I'm want to do see, trading. That was, I was telling you earlier, like like that's what I want. <clears throat> that's <clears throat> what I want is I want there to be a much stronger atmosphere for trading i want mm -hmm. there to be i want that to be the strongest vibe i want to outdo buying like mm. i started on instagram those trade nights yes that's right did it once or twice and it was it was fun it was a good time but it mm. became that people wanted to come on to promote their own channels or people came on to like show cards that they believed in but they weren't you know what i mean like i i just it, it, it i didn't have the structure down but i would very much like to see us in our group have real trade nights because I think that's mm. what's going to be the difference between us at a convention and us in a tr in a Marvel event, Marvel card event, right? And there's actual things that people wanted, right? Leaving collections and people getting what they've always wanted into collections and being able to see cards in hand. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how it's done. And I don't know... Because I'm not a collector who has a lot to trade, obviously. You know what I mean? I just, I just, I've never. I mean, I've got this box way. of stuff here, but you know, none of it's see, massively that, high end or anything like that. But you know, but still. see, maybe that's part of it, right? Is <clears> that like the cards you have there that you showed me, the tributes, Jack Kirby, some of those mm. other cards that you probably, I probably know you have in there, are cards that other people would like to have. Mm. And maybe it is getting away from like maybe trade night is not getting cards that are were unobtainable to finally be obtainable. Maybe it's more of like, hey, it's about filling gaps, completing sets, bring your ninety four set. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. You yeah. Gaps. I'll show you what I have. You show me what you have. Yeah. Let's even swap condition. Yeah. You know, you want a better gambit? Let me see if I have yeah. a better gambit. I've got a Something stack like of that. Marvel Beginning Series three base cards here. I've got chase cards from it. I've got Marvel anime just, base cards. You know, that's stuff. the way to do it. You know, I just like that idea better. Is that chunk so, of clear old X Men base cards? So much of the hobby right now is flash right mm -hmm. and and some of that flash has substance of course it does mm. you know what i mean and, and I, I don't mean to be uh, contradicting myself but <laughs> i don't know I, I like to see people getting to get things they want for their binders and collections mm -hmm. 
in a way that kind of sparks a conversation in a way that kind of promotes excitement and like Mm -hmm. a hangout. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't tell you some of the best moments of the year were hanging out with you guys. You know what I mean? And stuff like mm. that and like doing things with people. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was. Like I wanna I wanna see you and me together. Mm. You know what I mean? Opening up something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like somewhere talking to a bunch of people about Marvel cards. Like I wanna see that kind of stuff happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know. Absolutely. Um so what set or item or event you're looking forward to in 2023 i don't know what it is but i i do want masterpieces because <laughs> i want to see what it looks you like and everyone else. I, i'm going to say it again this hasn't been announced by the way i still think and i'm sure he'll be the first one to actually message if he still listens um or if he gets wind of it i i still think i still think it's eric gist I don't what, know for sure. For MM artists? For MM, yeah. I'd I love I it to know. be. I'd love it to be. I mean, he's the best. I mean, he's great. He is, he is, he's, he's he is really top great. end. He's um, really great. I don't I don't see that not happening. I, I wonder if, I mean, I hope eventually that happens because he's yeah. just so wonderful. Um, I think whoever the next artist is, it's going to be pretty spectacular obviously mm-hmm. um and it's going to be pretty great and i'm i'm excited to see what that rev- what that is and how they do it and i and i hope i hope it's really interesting i have a i have a good feeling i don't know why but i have a good feeling geist would be fantastic it's, it's, he just did uh, such good work gist. on flair i've got i've got gist. a way to remember Thank it you. i have gist. got a way to remember it now yes not gist. least of which is that every time i get it wrong i've put the <laughs> <laughs> intro in as audio on the audio version of the episode uh but yes. also he just did that moon knight um print that pair of oh, that's right. prints I mean, for um, upper deck right. and there was a there was a great his signature is beautiful oh my goodness oh, it, would, it would look yeah, so awesome. good on Killed the it. um on the gold sig um on Marvel masterpieces, it really would. But yeah. he um, he introduced himself on that. But also, and I'm I'm Eric. I'm really sorry, but I I remember it. The way I remember it is, you know, you do rhyming things in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eric Gist. I went and got him pissed. Why? Why? We went drinking. Why? We what went drinking. I got him pissed. There's so many other words. I know, but but the rhyme with Gist. Why would you? Really, Eric? I'm sorry. No disrespect, my you, friend. There's unbelievable. <laughs> you can't take me anywhere, can you? <laughs> Eric Gist. Eric, I mean, I mean, you. he was. I, we, we, I, I got to meet him in New you York. You got to meet him, man. Well, I'm sure we're going to be meeting him and other people as well, mm-hmm. um, eventually. Um, but yeah, he's great. I mean, I'm. I, I want anime too. I want anime volume. Anime too. too. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, I'm really looking forward to that anime set. That first one really took me back. That was really cool to see. So I'm excited about anime too. I'm excited about masterpieces. I'm excited. I mean, uh, Unbound is looking so good. They really mm. changed it up for Unbound 2. And I think they just made just the best additions mm. um, possible. And I think they're doing a really good job on Unbound 2. And, and Fred and Ian are so wonderful and killing that and doing such a good job there. Um, I'm trying to think, there was one more set I was like thinking about as a possible. Well, Fear Ultra Avengers, of course. Uh, yeah, that's it. Premiere yeah, might Avengers. see the light of day. Beginnings might see the light of day. Uh, we're still waiting yeah. on Marvel Allure, which, according to the last non-sport update, is out now. <laughs> um, I, I mean, listen, I you, you know from the other week that I'm really looking forward to the um, Disney Plus sets. Wonder Vision, especially those are exciting. Like imminent. I'm actually Wonder Vision yeah. is imminent. Uh, I I, okay. I think it's going to drop. I thought it was going to drop, bef- you know, before the end of the year. It might still do so, but it's going to be very, very soon. I mean, it's on the it's very on the verge. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm looking All forward to that. Really good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, there's some exciting MCU sets coming up. Um, yeah, it's it's there's there's, there's a lot to come. It's like buses, you know, they're queued up, waiting to come down yeah. the road. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping they, I'm hoping a lot of things were fixed 
with pandemic mm-hmm. stuff and supplies. Mm-hmm. And I hope it just becomes this kind of like, I hope 2023 yeah. is just packed. Marvel annual. Sets. Of course, we're still like, waiting on that. I want to see them all. Mm-hmm. Marvel annual looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Flair Ultra Wolverine stock is with the artist now. We've seen it. That looks really good. That, looks, really um, that cool. looks good. Um, a, lot of, a lot of Wolverine collectors out there, they're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, that. that's going to be popular. That's going to be very popular. There's Black set. Cats in that set. Actually, she might do because there was a mini series that was with Wolverine Claws. One and oh. two. Oh, wow. So I actually there could know be that a Black one. Cat. I don't know why set. I know that one. Yeah, Jimmy Palmiotti wrote it. I can't remember who the artist was. Uh, I feel like I've seen a cover. For, you will have. Yeah, yeah. So even if they did a cover thing with one of That'd those. That'd be in there, definitely. Uh, like team ups. Yeah, team. Man, they should, be, do, yeah, a they do, team they should do a team up set. Oh, seriously, That's Wolverine, up. Marvel. Why? Why Upper Deck don't do a Marvel team up set? A Marvel team up set. Marvel team up. Marvel set. team oh, up set. Marvel, Marvel team up set. Now, Marvel team up was actually a Spidey title for the longest time, so it could quite happily be a Spidey themed set. I'd be very happy with that. There's something about seeing. Wolverine and Spider-Man in the same card that mm-hmm. just does it for me. I mm-hmm. don't know what it is, it. Yeah. but anytime I see that, I'm just like, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, actually, you know what? I just got funny enough. I got it in a 10 because I couldn't, I, I have one here that would pr- probably would have graded high, but I didn't want to risk it. And a buddy of mine had it. So I, I got it for a very fair price, but in Spider-Man archives, mm. uh, Silver Surfer has a card and yes. he's there with Spider-Man and it's drawn by Isad Ribic. Oh, nice, um, nice, nice. Who's, who drew Surfer in the comic books for Surfer Requiem and has done Thor, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Surfer and Spidey are there. And it's just such a cool, like, I don't know, man. There's something about seeing Spidey with people and Wolverine with people that you're just like, mm. that's awesome. That's Spidey and cool. Daredevil is my sweet spot. That's a... Because Spidey and Daredevil, they're, they're kind of proud in the same beat. That's a like. good one. They I like it. Cool, I man. really love they it when they cross cool over. Together. I love it when I they mean, cross over. I mean, the fact over. that Daredevil was in the movie mm. just gave me chills because you're just like, well, yeah, they should be hanging out. You know, yeah. like street level heroes. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. a street level hero set would be cool. Hell's Kitchen Heroes. There you go. There you go. You can have that that's one it. for free. You can have, um, that's nice. That's nice of you I'm to give that up. Absolutely freezing. I'm absolutely freezing. Um, what are you going to change, if anything, if you're collecting? Yeah, so I am. So I'm gonna be. I'm probably. I'm probably not gonna be as crazy as I am, um, because I just don't want to compromise on like what I think a car should cost. So I think I'll be out for a lot. It's funny. Everyone looked at my Silver Service stat list, which I'm so excited to see yours. Um, you haven't posted yours, right? You posted something similar. Oh, it, mate, it's a, it's a Google sheet at the moment. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. No, 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 no. It's not I something, something, something I can visualize very easily. No, no, no. So, um, because I'm only missing I'm one. I'm just going to mute because I need to blow my nose. It's hideous. No worries. I'm only missing one car for the parallel. And people were asking me what it was. And it was the Red Spectrum 1 of 1 from MM16. And like, I could have offered something crazy for it. I know who has it. They're very nice. Their they're surfer collector is really cool. But like, I'm just not compromising. Like I don't care. No, no, no. Like the Silver Spectrum Auto Silver Surfer, I've tried to get it a couple of times now, and I every time I find out the price, I'm just not interested. Or like mm-hmm. it would come to me, and I'd be like, no. And I, honestly, I think that's the future for me. Is like I look at my collection now, and I'm very happy. And I don't really like if I stop today, I'm good. Like I, I can always look yeah. at my collection and enjoy it if I yeah, stop today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In all seriousness. Yeah. So I think I think that's it. I think like I think I'll pick up surfer cards here and there. I'll pick up interesting cards I like and maybe open a box with friends. Mm. But I think I think that's where I'm at. I don't think I'm gonna do the craziness that I was doing because I just can't compromise on certain prices. And if, mm. if things unfortunately go the way I think they might go. I might have cards come to me and people offer me like, Hey, I know you're this person. Do you want this card? Here's the price. I, I, I'm just going to be like, I, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It's just going to depend. Wait and see. But wait and see. I'm just going to wait and see. And, and I'm just, I'll buy things obviously. And I know I'll make myself into a liar and buy rare stuff, but like, 
I am not going to torture myself mm. to complete things. Like the Surfer Collection for me, between 1978, 1976 to mm. 2014, is as complete as anybody can have a Silver Surfer Master Collection. You know, I have 2016, I have 2022, I have a bunch of other cards as well, you know, almost complete, but that's it. I did it. Mm. Year to year, done, I'm happy. That's the end of it. That's where I'm at. You? So, you know, I messaged you and I said I was going to do something crazy. And I said, I'll tell you on the podcast. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking I've probably got, I haven't counted them recently. I've probably got 200-ish, maybe a bit more, Black Cat sketches. Oh, it's, a little bit, it's a lot. And I'm not, I'm not finding that she's in many sets anymore. And when I am seeing them, people just want crazy, crazy money these days for sketches. So if people want crazy money for sketches and people are paying crazy money for sketches, then A, it's a good time to trim. B, yeah, a lot of them, like the ones I've got, are locked up in collections. So I was thinking about it and I was thinking, well, you've done something very similar to this, I think. You've got a certain number of yes, surface sketches. I did do that, 100%. Yep. yep. I only have... I think I think I only ever want to have at max 25 35 mm. most likely 25 That's so interesting. I I wasn't sure if it was a fixed number or not. Mine's going to be a fixed number. See, that's exciting because I have, going I just have to put number. a there's certain cards I still want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it might be less than 25, but I know that I don't think I'll ever exceed 25 is what I mean. What's mm. your number? I'm excited. This is cool. I love this stuff. He was first debuted in 1979, so my number is 79. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. And sick, that's sick, sick. sketch cards Minus on 66. sketch stock. Um, or you could go with 48, 49, because whatever issue Surfer first appeared in. Let's do that instead. I'm going to do yeah. 48. Yeah. Um, I doubt I'll get there, but yeah. You're right. Uh, That's such a good one. But I like I oh, like so it. Mad. It just it just feels it feels right. I've yet to get them all out and look at them and decide what's going to go. But there That's are That's going to be really fun. There for are you. some choice ones that are going to be coming you know, out to play. You know what I would say mm. and not that you need advice ever. Mm -mm -mm. But like I did this already. Yes. And what I was really conscious of was this. There are God, I hate I'm going to say this on air, but whatever. <laughs> there are, you guys have to understand, like, it's tough to say things out loud because it just becomes harder for you later, but I, I feel okay where I'm at. Um, double check every artist. Oh, yes. And make sure no one did anything with Black Cat that you're not aware of. You know everything about Black Cat. You know your artists better than I know my artists, but like... Mm. make sure because i had to like triple and quadruple check some of my cards because i didn't think they did and then just modernly they came out with like a comic book variant like a comic store variant mm. and i was like oh i almost totally put this out the door because i didn't think about that you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's that was a huge key factor for my collection is like did they do anything professional with silver surfer in the comic book world mm. and that's that's kind of where you know what I mean? And then I have a little subsection of like my favorite sketch card artists who are just great artists in mm. general. Mm. And I'm sure we'll do other things, obviously, but they're just newer. You know what I mean? So like yeah, yeah, those yeah. I kept separate, um, but, I, but I'm keeping those as well. But yeah, I, I, I did that and I was kind of really happy. I like I took like extra precautions and then I put down the issue number mm -hmm. and I put down the year that they did it. So in my my list, I have that kind of nice. Reference. Nice, nice. I had to. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so there's going to be some pieces that I will well, – there's going to be a lot of pieces that I'll be letting go, maybe up to 100. Honestly, man, I support so, this. You have no idea how yeah. smart this is, in my um, opinion. It will be a you sale. It me? won't be a fire sale, just in case it was listening. You no know, fire because, sale. No, no, because, no. Well, I don't need to. They are, if they don't sell, they go back in the thing. You know, and I'll you keep them and enjoy them. No, there's yeah. no rush to sell um, anything. 
but you have um, such good pieces though man like there's gonna be some me good tons stuff. of black hat sketches i've never there's gonna be some good i've stuff. never seen a dud like i've seen only good things smart yeah. things there's gonna I mean, be they're, there's they're, gonna be some crazy good looking cards smarty archives will probably get biggest trim um yeah there's loads of written house ones there's, there's some really good upper deck ones there's some that are in that comp ship so i've got to wait till that's in hand and then i can sit back and objectively look at those as well um yeah but yeah um i mean my main criteria to retain will be i'd like to have at least one on every official sketch stock if it existed um so, but I've got that, had that for example. List. Yeah, there was a Thor movie, for example, like the first Thor movie, and there was a black cat sketch in it. It's like, why should there be a black cat sketch in the Thor movie? See, I, that's why it I was stopped there. it. But I've got it, it. Was in my no. I see. I stopped it because I kept finding stuff like that, and mm. I wasn't interested in hunting it. Because then, because Surfer was banned, certain artists had sketch cards that would slip through the cracks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, so I, I actually, I, I went away from that. I think it's a good idea for you because you have way more range than I ever have. Like I've only ever owned mm-hmm. like a oh, hundred and something surfer sketches. Mm-hmm. It's not from a lack of trying. <laughs> it's, just, you know, uh, I mean, it's what I've had throughout the years. I mean, I went for a phase of buying almost everything I could see when I could afford it. He's back in. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, it's not you. It's me. Um, back in the written house days, um, and it's got you know it's gotten tougher to do that because I've focused more on the base and the chase and the numbered. No, but that's what happened to me because yeah, I was putting exactly. together. Mm. Same. I was putting together the crazy. collection and. Yeah, but she's crazy. in. She's in fewer sketches because I think a lot of them get rejected when they draw her now. And I've become. That's, a, I didn't I've really become, think about that. I've become so much fussier about the way she's depicted. So much fussier as well. I'm the I'm the same like, way with surfer. Someone, like I'm really someone, picky now. someone posted me a, um, a link to something. I think it was um, elusive. Um, hats off to him on mm. um, on Instagram. I woke up to it. In fact, mm. let me have a look at it. Uh, he sent me a link to a sketch card that's on eBay. And it's Marvel's 75th anniversary. It's uh, from 2014. It's a sketch card. It's a nice sketch card. It's on buy nice. now for five hundred dollars. Four hundred and ninety nine pound ninety five. <laughs> I mean it's it's an okay sketch, but it ain't a five hundred dollar sketch, that's for sure. Um, um so the price is extremely optimistic on that one. Um but 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 even if I could afford it. I looked at it and I was like, "No, nah, it's not for me." Because I just, it's just, you know, when it's not, you know, you know, a hundred percent. Just because it's of your character doesn't mean that you get, no. you're going to want it. You know, or no, no, no. I mean, it. and I'm very, gosh, you know me, man. I'm picky. I'm picky, picky. Mm. Like I don't like, I don't like surfer with ears. I don't like surfer that looks like Iceman. I don't <laughs> like surfer ears. in a weird position. Like, what about nipples? It has to be correct. What about nipples? Like. Uh, no, if it doesn't have nipples, I don't touch it. Like, that's always <laughs> been my line. Please don't draw nipples on Surfer. I beg of you guys. Uh, Tony's already doing it. I can hear, oh, Tony. Tony, I can hear Perno right now being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Here um, we go. <laughs> so on that note, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give a shout out now to a guy that hit me up on Instagram. Uh Marvel Card Investor. And the yeah. only reason I know his actual name, his actual name is Shane. Yeah. Um, bless him, because he heard the episode and he said, oh, yeah, I've got a Marvel Gems empty box for you. He's the best. And That's so, the Sarasota guy. Is that him? That's it. He I changed thought, his name recently. Yeah. Oh, just, I thought his thing was, I thought his, um, that's what's confusing comics. me. Yeah, so he had to Why change, change it because okay. so he changed it. It was funny. He talked to me on so the phone. He's such a, Can we have a he's crib such sheet, a nice please? Guy. When you're gonna change your names. Can I you know, I know, <laughs> I know. Because he, 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 he was like, I know you go by four names, so yeah. this might be a good thing to get advice from. <laughs> but he, he he'd already you'd already uh, he'd already changed it, but That's funny. I don't I forgot why he changed it. He doesn't he doesn't really sell, not really at all. No, no, and no, he, no, like, no. He has like a great collection. No. He, he felt bad. He told me he was like 
I put investor in there. I know how bad that sounds, but I really mm-hmm. like the sound of it. And I yeah, came up with the logo. It was <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. But he was a gem. But he told me about this. He told me that he sent you a box because he heard the episode. He did. He did. But you know what he put oh, in nice with it? Guy. You know what he put what in with nice it? Guy. He put in a what? PSA. He put in a PSA seven exquisite black hat from Marvel Gems. So Shane. I owe you beer, multiple beers, my friend. You would really like him. In fact, he was he was awesome. We are going to so get we are going to get Eric Gist. I'm going to take you out, and we are going to get absolutely. Um, I can't use Eric's name as rhyming. You have slate. to stop it. I can't. You have to stop it. I'm sorry, you Eric. Can't. This is bad. This is brilliant. This Ending is the weird. year by massively insulting a major artist in the Marvel card scene. Yes, 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 yes. We might have to cut some of this. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Still quite funny though. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> things we need to change well how about ian not insulting people on the episode how's about that um so things we need to change uh things we want to see change and you were t- you were touching on sketch cards earlier yes you said, i'm gonna put um, a pin in that so this is the pin really um sketch cards need to be better designed like, like in all seriousness, like shout out to Upper Deck, who I love and respect, but 100% sketch cards are not working with how you're designing them. Um, the logos, the you know what I mean? Like there are certain things they're having on sketch cards now that don't make sense for an artist to draw on, and they're highly distracting. Um, examples like the little Spider-Man in the corner. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I- why um little things like that like i speaking of marvel gems looking at the sketch cards for marvel gems that holds up Mm. those are beautiful the foiling on there they look great you know what i mean like they're really clean and the cool thing about the marvel gems sketch card is that it kind of matches not kind of it does match the aesthetic of the cards So it feels much matches the aesthetic of the base card. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it feels like it matches the content. Like, like, what's some of your like? In all seriousness, like, your what are some of your very favorite sketch card blanks? Oh, um, or sketch, not blanks, but you know what I mean. Like, like stock. Well, masterpieces 0708. Killed it. Gorgeous. Killed it. Um, killed it. Killed it. Killed it. Killed it. That's always going to be my because they're my first sketch cards. You never forget your first. Um, you never forget your first. You never do. No. Oh. What's her name? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Rachel. Anyway, um, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rachel. Uh, and shout out to Rachel. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> That's me. Um, what else? A Flea Watcher, Spider Man 17. Um, Killer. I killer, like killer killer uh, Marvel gems. I like, um, I do, I do like a lot masterpieces 2018. Um, don't know why. I, I don't know why I'm s- because zeroing in you on know that, why? but I'm just zeroing it's in because on that. it messed around with the edges mm-hmm. more. The edges of all the cards have that little mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and the thing for 2016 and the thing for 2020 and even 2022, which we've seen mm. those lines, they can't like, you have to, you can't have borders going straight across the card mm. or come over a certain percentage of the card, mm. because what it does is that it distracts the eye and it gives only a very little opportunity for mm. artists to like think about composition because you're giving too much weight to the frame. Right. So it's like it's called magnetism of the frame. Mm, Basically, mm. you see it in like video stuff. So like right now, right, having this much headroom in the frame yeah. keeps your focus here. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't dist- it doesn't feel like I'm like all the way yeah. over here. So like mm. having the border of the cards just be the corners. Mm. You know what I mean? It leaves breathing room for everything. And yeah. it feels, you know, what I mean, it, feel, it feels yeah. the work is there. And it looks cool, but it's not impeding the art. That's right. I don't know. I, I just, I hope I, they need to fix that because I've seen it multiple times as a mistake now. And I really, really don't think it works. Mm. Really, really don't think it works. Mm. Um, I'm going to say that the, for me, it's the, the way they frame comic cuts. So they absolutely, they absolutely like 
muffed it as far as I'm concerned in X Men Metal Universe. Hundred percent in Spidey Metal Universe. I actually think they landed it completely. It, it works really well that Porter. It works um, really well, which I was surprised. I didn't. Yeah. think it did when I saw the cell sheet, but then when yeah. I saw it in person, I was like, okay, this actually looks really good. That said, I mean, not that I'm. I I don't even want to own one. Um, nor would I be lucky enough to own one. But I've never been that impressed by. Oh my goodness! Okay, so that thing that's ending on eBay in fourteen minutes and thirty three seconds. I was talking about when before we started oh, yeah. recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was up to nineteen pounds, so I'm out. <laughs> it was oh, really? five dollars. One of these. It was a binder from Spidey Film Cards. Uh, I just wanted point. another nice binder. binder yeah, it is. I wanted another Sp- Spidey binder, specifically made for oh, trading cards cool. to hold other Spidey sets that don't have binders. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking, yeah. and yeah, I mean, I'm a cheap bugger, so I'm not going to pay. <laughs> I'm also skinny. I mean, it makes sense. But um, but yeah, no, it's fine. There's been quite a few of them pop up in the last few months, weirdly. That but anyway, set has been popping up here and there. It has. Yeah. It's a lovely set. Um, but set. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't. I'm not massively keen on the borders of the Amazing Fantasy 15. I don't know what I what I would expect though, because the panels are smaller. Because the style, you know, because yeah. you know, it think it, the comic styles evolved as they went through. So the panels are quite small anyway. Um, yeah. And the border yeah. does kind of fit with the color scheme, so it's mm-hmm. fine. It's just aesthetically for me personally. I think I just didn't dig it. Um, but there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Whereas with the X Men Metal Universe, I mean, we went. That was wrong. We reviewed that like, episode. It was I don't want to like, see. Just ghastly. Yeah. You know? I don't want to see the pictures of these massive skybox logo. <laughs> I also don't want to see the pictures that. of the artists and writers, if I can be honest. And the reason for that. Not oh yeah, that was Marvel Ages and Marvel Ages. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh huh. I don't like it. The and, and the reason I don't like it is because a the picture feels like a Facebook picture. Put it on the back. Put it on the back. Yeah. Don't stick it in a square. Actually, it works really well on the back. Floating circle. Like the um, creator autos from Masterpieces t- 2008. Yep. They work 100%. brilliantly. I mean, they're sticker autos, the but they've got on they've the got back. a representation from the comic, all the work they're talking about. And on the back, you have a photo of the um, creator. Because I think, actually, are they writers? Yeah, I think they're all writers on that Yeah, one. some are writers, um, some are artists, and yeah. some inkers and pencilers as well. I yeah, the one in 2008, MM, they're all writers now. They're writers. Yes, writers, writers thinking, right. Yeah. They're like, edit- it was but, like editors something or whatever. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. What else? What else? That's a good one, though. What else? That's a really what else? Good Things one. we could change. I think, listen... Uh, I'm sure I could think of a hundred things, but I don't want to be. I don't want to just get into. No, a bit no, of, no, 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 no. I not just want to listen. stay positive. Those, I just, I just want to stay positive. To... Stay positive here. Stay oh, those were good. Those were good, man. Those, um, those, those are two biggies, though. Those were like the biggest ones for me. Um, and I just want to quickly touch, just personally, about podcast goals. Um, uh, retain authenticity. That's one of the things that people say to us quite a lot of the time. Is that you know it's one of the biggest think they like about what we do um you know we've never been anyone to chase clickbait we you know um uh, we whilst we're critical of things that happen in the hobby and things we see happening in the hobby and i'm not just talking about from the companies or from the dealers i'm talking about from other people who are active within the hobby you know we don't we try not to openly slate people because that's d- disrespectful. And, you know, while we have an opinion, we're not trying to start fights. You know, we're no. not trying to do that. Uh, so one thing I will say to people who openly disagree and dislike us, because there are people, you know, who on Facebook <laughs> say that they openly disagree and dislike us. There are entire groups where we're persona non grata. Um I'm going to say to you, happy Christmas or happy holidays, whatever you celebrate anyway. And I genuinely mean that. Um, because the thing is, you may not like us, but that's not the main thing. I don't care if you like us or not. The main thing is that we all like and enjoy the. That's kind of what it's all about. Here, let's let's start from the top because I lost your your. This was really great. Let's start from the top because I lost internet connection. You, you lost internet connection. You didn't. Oh yeah. my goodness! Do you mean to say I've got to repeat that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. We'll, we'll just start from the. Sorry. I okay. It's really. Good. I'm not I sure if I. Like I'm it. not sure if I can deliver it with the same. The same authenticity. It was um, beautiful. Which, I believe in you. Which, which which bit did you lose from? 
So even though there's people, you know, that don't mean like us okay. type of thing. Yeah. So, and the other thing is, even though there are people who openly disagree with us and dislike us and will happily state so on social media, I mean, there are, there are Facebook groups where we're completely persona non grata. You know, I, I would say to those people anyway, you know, happy Christmas and happy holidays. And I genuinely mean that, you know, have a really nice time. You know, I wish you all the luck and love and prosperity for you and your families in the, in the coming year. Um, because you, you might not like us and you might think that we are bad for the hobby as I've seen typed. Um, but the main thing is that we, we all, it, it doesn't matter if you like us. I don't give flying monkeys. That's not what it's about. Um, it's not a popularity contest. The main thing is, is that we all like and enjoy the hobby. So, you know, and even if we disagree on things, I'd like to find, I'd like to think that that could at least be some common ground. So, um, 100%. So yeah, yeah. Kind of just wanted just wanted to end that. I just realised I missed a card. That's from really earlier nice. On. I missed a card from earlier on when I was talking about um, collection piece acquired. Oh, gemographies. Can we oh, talk about yeah. how nice gemographies are from Black Diamond? And now this is admittedly a, a lower really one because cool. it's Tim Blake Nelson. But uh, I mean, he's well, going to be in it though. He he's is going to be the leader. Yeah, the leader. And I'm not talking. Um, he's a great actor too. So he is a very good actor. I mean, it's a thick. God, look oh, how wow. thick that is. That's the thickest cool. this, was it? Um, but yeah, number damn, look at the lab created look diamond, cool it's just lovely. Uh, the, the sticker the is really Hulk, well man. framed. Oh, incredible! Hulk. It's nice. I've got a Benedict Wong ah, one cool. on the way from um, in my Com C shipment. That looks so good, but it's just nice. It's just a nice card. It's lovely. And yeah, really again, nice card. thick. You can see the different color strata layering in it as yeah. well. So I just, I just, it occurred to me as a card that I just hadn't given enough love to. But that's awesome. Yeah, they are lovely. I think they're all numbered to 25. They look good, man. The Damn, foiling is really ridiculous. Good. It's kind of a rainbow, it's shimmery gorgeous. rainbow. Five, five. I'm telling you, man, that black diamond set. <sighs> They really knew what they were doing with that. It's set. amazing. But the thing it's is, the guy I bought it off set. has it had it sent it in a top loader, but he had a um, a one uh, a penny sleeve just over the card top loader, just Smart. to stop. Yeah, just to stop the risk of of the um, anything happening to the surface. So it's beautiful, beautifully Lovely. encased. Um, now this is an ultra pro. For those wondering, it's an ultra pro one eighty point. And it fits. However, I've recently discovered that the diamond shards, which are the costume cards for this set, won't fit in an Ultra Pro one touch because they're just slightly oh, they're cut, too high. big. Uh, let's see. Have if I you get a here? really deeper concave, like a like a bigger Ultra Pro magnet, yeah, I don't want to. Taller. Yeah, no, of course not. I mean, yeah. it's gonna look weird. But um, I did, I did have luck with that for some of my cards. Oh, I had one in here. Where is it? Where are they? I've lost them. I don't know where they are. Anyway, but those, <laughs> I need to get some BCWs. Um, there's a seller in Germany that has some, so I will be oh, nice. hopefully getting some. So I think that's it, really. Yeah, I agree with you but too, you? man. Like, I, I hope everyone has happy holidays. People and do and, and don't like us. Um, there is no ill will. You know, I, I still don't know why, you know, we're we're not in that group other than just people personally dislike us. But like, I don't know. I think I think that's something that goes along for a lot of other people, too. Right. I think there's a lot of. I think people just need to understand how just to like do their own thing. You know what I mean? Everyone's mm -hmm. so invested into what everybody else is doing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like truthfully, and you know this, right? All my close friends, I'm very honest <laughs> about everything. You know what I mean? To a fault, really I'm very honest to about stuff. You know what I mean? And, and, you just have to surround yourself with people that you like and that, you know, people you trust and enjoy the hobby yeah. that way. That's it. That's, that's the way, that's what I'm doing for the future. Like mm -hmm. I have my group of friends now, you know what I mean? That I like, know that I know I'm not going to be like, 
you know, screwed over or like, you know, they have no ill will towards me. And that for me is my hobby right now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it yeah. can't, it's unfortunate that it can't be everyone. And it's unfortunate that we can't, I think we can all respect each other. At least I hope we can all respect each other in some, some level of respect. But even if that's not the case, I, I would really just stress that in 2013, you find your group of people and just in the past. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And kind of just like, I don't know, not, not allow yourself to be roped into like Facebook comments or like mm-hmm. other stupid stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And kind of just enjoy your hobby with your buddies. Yeah. Well, well I'm hoping that happens in 2023 as well. As 2013. What did I say? 2022? <laughs> Oh, I it's a 2013. It just made me laugh. I'm sorry. I'm oh, being no, mean. No, I'm, I'm being sorry, mean. But that was like 10 years ago. And I was like, yeah, let's go back to the Why past. Why did I say 2013? I, I don't know. know. I you lost 10 years. You've lost 10 I years. I lost 10 years. That's way. it. Uh, where, did they, where did they go? Are it's like getting, my hands? It's like getting frozen in the here? ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we wake up 10 years in the past. <laughs> they just defrosted um, me. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'll be in Demolition Man next week. But, um... <laughs> well, what a callback! What a That's callback! callback right? I didn't Point expect you to go there. Yeah, I had to. You know, I had, had to do it. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I twenty twenty three, not twenty twenty thirteen. But that that's what I'm going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Like personally, that's I'm just mm-hmm. going to be with the people I know, people I like, and that's it. I'm not going to do all this other weird stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um. So 2023, um, there's there's some cool ideas we've got of topics to talk about. Um, if you've got a topic you want to talk about or if you want to come on the podcast, hit us up. Um, reach out to us. We're kind of I've kind of been off Twitter a little bit because it was just too much work to upkeep Twitter as well as Instagram and Facebook. Um, and also because Elon Musk is just crazy. Awesome. Mofo and it's just, yeah. the place is going to hell. <laughs> Twitter's kind of um, going to hell. Well, Twitter was going to hell beforehand anyway. Um, but it's, he's, he's, he's hit a gas pedal for that one. Um, no, but hit us up. Um, hoping to have some really good guests. Um, who else? Hoping to have Upper Deck back again soon. Dylan from Upper Deck. Um, and yeah, just thank oh, you to everyone. We got Upper Deck Billy. We He's have Upper Deck Billy. Yeah, hopefully, we'll have him on as well. Um, Grant will have everybody. Yeah. But um, thank you to everyone who's been on the podcast this year. Thank you to everyone who supported us. Thank you to everyone who does the intros and helps us out with that, or sends in questions, or just randomly sends us cool <laughs> from the bottom of your heart. Thank you very much. It's really kind of you. Thank um, you. And yeah, have a, have a nice time, mate. You too, man. I mean, yeah. Relax. It's gonna be, it's gonna Eat be a holiday, loads. Right? Eat loads. Eat loads. Eat I'm gonna loads roll of into the podcast in January. <laughs> Seriously, I'm about to go and cook up a massive, massive bowl of pasta, and oh. we're just gonna trough with That's red it. wine. Well, my daughter's not gonna have red wine, but but everyone else is. <laughs> if you have those grocery bags, you can put the handles around your ear, and it does act as like a little what well, like a nose like bag a for horses. Eating. Yeah, yeah. That's what I use. That's yeah. what I do for pasta. Yeah. <laughs> I do that for cheese balls and Doritos. <laughs> That's actually really smart. Because it stops all the crumbs going everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's actually really smart. No, yeah. just just run it under the tap, reuse it. Same bag. Yeah, <laughs> right. Why, why am I going to waste just, more plastic? Just don't get the bags with the holes in that stop toddlers from suffocating in them. Because if you yep. put, yeah, you know, you know what happens. Keep your nose above the bag. Yeah. And make sure, right? That makes sense. Okay, I'm with you. Cool. And when I'm doing that, I'll be sure that I'm also enjoying collecting. See you next year, people. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. Visuals and tasting notes for each episode can be found on our Facebook page. You can subscribe and leave us a voicemail via our home on anchor.fm forward slash mccp. We're also on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms. Please take a second to subscribe, like, and review our show wherever you get your podcasts. Our podcast can be found by Googling at the MCC pod, which will also find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Our Facebook community is at MCCW, Marvel Car Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. 
The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin MacLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists, and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time. And remember, it's a small hobby, but a fun one. Make mine Marvel and enjoy collecting. I am Groot. 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 Groot. I am Groot. 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 Groot.